My name is Christoph Jones. This is going to be episode four of The Record Show. <clears throat> I remember seeing Brandon um, at first at a work thing. Basically, I was in, in his place of work kind of as a guest, and I noticed that he had a typo negative tattoo. I think that was the first thing I noticed about him, and... Uh, I, that kind of spurred conversation and we just started talking about music. I mean, it's the same thing as like the band t-shirt thing. Like if you see somebody with a band t-shirt of a band you recognize, maybe it's not your favorite band, but you, you know they get it. So anyway, Brandon and I have just had this like kind of cool long distance relationship. Uh, Facebook, you know, Instagram, MySpace, FarmersOnly.com kind of friendship where we just talk through the internet. And uh, I'm also, I'm petting my dog, so... If it looks like I'm doing weird stuff with my hands, it's because of my puppy. Anyway, so stop. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I uh, I knew Brandon had a different musical taste than I did. Uh, we like some similar bands, but in general, he likes the most extreme kind of uh, music that you can that you can like, and I like that. Um, to me, I want to know why people like what they like, and and especially when it comes to like collecting records. There are some albums that are like kind of no-brainers everyone should have uh, as a record collector. And then there's others where you're like, does that even sound good on record? You know, like, but it doesn't matter because it's about uh, what, what your ears hear. I mean, there's no right answer. Like, no one's exactly right about what they listen to and why they listen to it. All right, so I'm here with uh, Brandon Morgan, and uh, we're in his, uh, his listening room, his, his Blue Cave. What do you call it? Do you have a room for that? I, I, I don't have a name for it. I wouldn't. This was the color when we moved in. Yeah. I, want, I want to paint it like gray or black or yeah. something. But... I could see you going gray or black. Yeah. You started collecting records about how long ago? Um, uh, probably th four years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just bought a couple here and there. And then I decided to sell all my CD collection, which was like, Six or seven hundred albums. So you, so before mm -hmm. even record collecting, you've been a, a collector of. Things. I've been a, a collector of many things. Yes, yeah, music, music being the primary, the but Funko Pops or whatever they're called. Yeah, I uh, those are an addiction on its own. Yeah, <laughs> I, there's only a few that I want, but the ones that I want, I want them bad. I kind of know you as like my black one of my black metal friends. So like. When I see you post, it's usually about some band that I've never heard of, where their font I can't read because it's like <laughs> just thorns. Like, right. That spell something <laughs> out. Like, like it takes it takes years just to be able to read those album covers. I'm sure, but yeah, now they're pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> I can yeah, pick I mean, one up and it's like um, it's like magic eyes. Yeah. You're like, oh, I know what this is immediately. Yeah. But most people are like, I can't see it. Have you always been into black metal? Um. No, I can credit that to a good friend of mine, Jordan. Um, he he got me listening to it in like high school, mm -hmm. and I always liked metal. Um, but I want it. seems like I was always looking for something harder. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> I wanted to to get to the I guess the 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 brink or the the, the darkest stuff I could find. Mm -hmm. And I found it, uh, or I found what I like anyway, and I've stuck with it now for uh, probably sixteen years. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's definitely part of me now. I mean, over half my life I've listened to this kind of music, and <clears throat> it's it's special. If you're a music lover, like one of the things you're always doing is like trying to chase the a sound, you know. Yeah. And like what what sound speaks to you the most? And some people it's like I, I kind of poke fun, but some people it's jazz. That's not a like a musical style that speaks to me in particular. Like, right. It's fine. It's got its merits. Like every genre. Oh, sure. But I kind of was on a similar quest as you, like uh, like in my <coughs> younger years, and it took me a while to start to find the the right amount of heavy for me. Why black metal on record? Uh, I'm, well. As every sick individual that collects records know, uh, it's about the hunt. It's about the hunt. Um, a lot of spe specific, specifically black metal. It's um, 
so limited in press. Uh, some of these people that put it out now, it's variations of color. Um, I don't know, and it's awesome to have those particular albums and that artwork in such a large size. I mean, <clears throat> I think that that's the whole aesthetic thing behind it is it's it's beautiful, but at the same time, um, it's carnal. It's 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 just um, like outspoken. Mm. So uh, it's that, and <clears throat> I mean the records ha or well black metal in particular has gotten me to the point to where you can go and focus on a band and then figure out if they've been in other bands you can do a lot of research and as far as that goes so that's been really cool to find out old bands that these members have been in and check that out and even some of them have like gone away from the scene for a long time and they've actually come back mm -hmm. and so you're starting to see some of that and it's refreshing like where do you predominantly buy most of your records 90 percent of it's online yeah i mean uh well, I'd probably say 95% of it, mm -hmm. not, uh, I'll occasionally get a couple if I'm like at a show or if I go to, if I go out of town, I do go to Mills. Um, Mills is great because it's one of the few places that they have like a, a heavy section. Yeah. You know, and it's just labeled heavy and it's like, I mean, a little bit of everything. Well, even yeah. Love Garden. Love and, Garden, yeah. And they're fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. But... <laughs> that's so pretty far away for us, you know. Exactly, yeah. it's three hours minimum. Yeah. I hate when you find something that you really want, where you're just like, oh my god, I gotta spend that much on this. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the bad part is that there's just some. It doesn't matter what it costs. If I can get it, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yeah, it doesn't matter. If you don't mind me asking, yeah. what, what's the most you've spent on a single record? On a single record? Uh -huh. Lurker of Chalice. It's uh, Rest from Leviathan. Mm -hmm. uh, he did an ambient black metal record, and I bought this December. Mm -hmm. Paid a hundred and twenty bucks for this one. Mm -hmm. What is your prized possession in your collection? It's Mayhem the Mysterious. Uh -huh. uh, it's a repress. It's nothing special about the press, um, but it's the fact that it's signed by everyone that's uh, still around in the band yeah um two of them are going to be unobtainable because one lives in france and one lives in norway so yeah uh, they don't tour ever mm -hmm. uh, if i could get that signed i mean that thing would be sealed in glass mm -hmm. forever what else is like do you have as a kind of a prized possession um or do you have a grail that you've been hunting for years that you were able to find well i think i recently got the carpenter brute trilogy it's their three eps pressed on this is the third press and i'm gonna pretend like i've even heard of that so <laughs> no like the band is carpenter brute yeah yeah um it's and it's not anything in particular like it's no black metal at all this mm -hmm. is electro oh okay cool were you kind of gothy before you got yeah. into black stuff? Like, yeah, real Black hard. stuff. That's the weirdest yeah. thing way to describe. <laughs> like, I hate to just say black metal, but you get, like, it's a genre to yeah. itself. But there's so many subs of black metal. But Exactly, yeah. Well, the reason I ask about it is because the one thing, like, I think when we first met, one of the first things I remember is that you have that typo negative tattoo. Yeah. And I remember like kind of connecting with you about that. That might have not been the first conversations we had. No, but, but you're you're hit you're pretty hit on with, yeah. with what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, I'm like really big into the goth stuff. Mm -hmm. Um well, because when you say electronic like that that to me like lends itself to more of a gothy feel mm -hmm. like um, not clubby or anything, but yeah, you know, like, and you like Manson a lot, and obviously yeah. that's fairly gothy. Typo yeah. is pretty gothy. Yeah. Terry Reed. Not, no, I'm blank faced. <clears throat> I don't okay. Know. All right. Um, I had no idea who the artist was mm -hmm. until Rob Zombie put out The Devil's Rejects. Okay. That soundtrack is mm, probably my favorite movie soundtrack ever. Oh, really? You know, just, I need to revisit it. It's been a real well, long time. And the reason why, it, it just the area that I grew up in in Arkansas, mm -hmm. um, obviously a lot of southern rock, a lot of country. I look it up online and I'm like, who the hell is this Terry Reed guy? And so, yeah, I YouTube it. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, those songs, those are the songs that I remember from the movie, but I want to get them. Mm-hmm. So I look them up on Discogs. Mm-hmm. And heartbroken. It's only, it was, it was only pressed back in 1974 mm-hmm. um, on ABC Records, which is now defunct 40 years. Yeah. Um, they've never repressed it. It's never been repressed ever. And it's only available in the initial pressing and uh, promo copies, DJ copies. I have a DJ copy. Do you really? Yeah. How, how did you get it? <laughs> okay, so uh, my friend Caleb and I, uh, he and I have been correct, collecting records about the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. And he was working on the road and he was working for the, uh, the army. He's okay. setting up buildings and whatnot for soldiers to, to get used to life overseas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Um, so he's going about and he's going into record stores and I'm buying records for him because he's like, we're texting back and forth and he's like, I want to get this. If you see it, it comes up online, mm-hmm. order it for me. You can just use my PayPal and pay for it. Right. Send it to your house. That way you know it's in good hands. So he's up at some backwards ass record store in Michigan mm-hmm. and he walks in and he's looking at the, he asked the clerk and apparently he's been this, doing this for a while and I had no idea. Because he knew I wanted that album, and he knew that it was pretty much unobtainable for less than like eighty dollars. And I was like, I love that album, but I don't know how much I really want to spend on it because yeah. the record's forty years old or more. Yeah. And he walks in and he's like, "Yeah, do you happen to have this?" Uh, this is his quote unquote how he asked the guy at the counter. He's like, "You happen to have this uh, album cover? It's kind of an off white. It's got the singer. He's kind of." Kind of looks like mid seventies. It's kind of got like brown flowing hair, and it's got his name at the very top and very uh, like clean print. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, you know, I think I have one of those. And he's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what a bizarre thing. Yeah. Right? And so he goes and pulls it out, and it's like eight dollars. What? And the guy just didn't know what he had. Well, no, the guy was just like, "Here, this is just a random record from mid '70s." Yeah, he thought it was just you know your average mid '70s rock record, <laughs> and it wasn't. That, I don't guess that he was trying to get money out of it. But so, um, my friend picked it up and didn't tell me. Okay. And so I contact him, and we're on and off with, with conversation, and like a week later, he's like, "Oh yeah, I picked you up something." And I was like, oh, yeah, what's that? And I was like, I got you something, too. And one of his records came in the mail. Yeah. So I sent him a picture, and he's like, he shoots me a picture of that, and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I was like, where did you find that? And he's like, oh, I found it at this random record store in Michigan. That's awesome. Eight bucks for it. (laughs) And uh, he's like, it's even a promotional copy. And I was like. Oh, man. So I look it up, and those are selling for about a buck 25. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) What? This looks like exactly <coughs> what you would expect to not like care, uh, give anything. Like I've seen, you would comb over that at a, a, a buyback store or like a Salvation Army a hundred yeah, times. Uh, yeah, I would never think to pick this album up. No it, way. It's N- amazing. Zero chance. So, so, so it's like seventies <laughs> rock kind of. Apparently, at one point, he was supposed to be the original singer of Led Zeppelin. What? Yeah. That's uh, such a great story, too. Like, yeah, and so when he brought that, I, I, dude, I was almost shaking. I was like, I can't believe I have this. Uh-huh. And so <clears throat> when he gave it to me, I actually went out to his house to drop off his stuff that had come to mind. And so he's like, well, are we going to listen to it? And I was like, well, of course we're going to listen to it. Yeah. Like, so we put it on, and uh, it was just, uh, it was surreal. Like, I, I couldn't believe I owned it. Yeah. And, and there's... 60s, I'm sure that all the older people uh, were saying the same thing about our music as what I'm saying about the music now. I really feel professional, like, like in a record studio. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> pow, pow. He's got a lot of things. I'm, I'm a digging. <laughs> I'm a digging the moves. 
<laughs> Kept a whole damn band by their knees. <laughs> Got the powder. Got the gun. <laughs> I'm a dig in Japan. <laughs> big. Huh? Big, big in Japan. I'm big in Japan. Oh. It'd be the only place. <laughs> they like the way that he does it. <laughs> Got the moves? <laughs> Got the hole on their knees. I think this song would be easy to dance to because I'm digging Japan. Because uh, you know what I think it'd be easy to dance to? You wouldn't have to worry about the words because they go over and over and he just puts a different ending on them. But I think it would be. I can see dancing to it. And I really like it. It's more, uh, it's not as noisy. Not that I could understand it, but Papa Papa. That's why he's a dig in Japan. <laughs> Papa Papa. Pa. Oh, big. I thought he was digging. <laughs> oh, I liked him. Yeah, I liked him. I could understand him. I liked him. I could, well, I thought I could understand him. He has a good, good, his band is not so noisy, and I like that part about him.